Today we are going to be sharing with you some freezer to slow cooker meals that don't rely on canned soups at all as part of the ingredient list because we've been asked by a lot of you for more low sodium recipes and if you're on a low sodium diet, canned soups are one of those things that you probably want to avoid. That's right. It is very convenient to add a canned soup to a recipe because it has all the things. It does have some salt content, but it has, you know, adds some layers of flavor. And there are ways to do a freezer meal without adding the canned soup. And we're going to show you how. As a matter of fact, most of our recipes, like 90% eh, at least of our recipes, don't have canned soup in them. But we do have some really, really good recipes that do rely on that as an ingredient. And that's okay because, you know, everything in moderation. We're not going to vilify canned soups here. There's a time and a place for them and they are okay to have on occasion. Absolutely. If you're tuning in today looking to change up your diet or continue a healthier diet, then these are for you. So the first recipe that we're going to be sharing with you today is a fairly new one to us and it is a slow cooker chicken and peppers. Super simple to get in the bag and then even simpler on the day of cooking because you just dump the bag contents into your slow cooker and turn it on. And it is so tender that it kind of just falls apart on its own. Self shredding. <laughs> I like that. That should be a new word that we use. It's like a self fluffing Christmas tree. It's self shredding chicken. <laughs> Into a large resealable freezer bag, you're going to add some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, some sliced peppers. You want to use red, orange, or yellow peppers in this. Sliced onion, minced garlic. We use our garlic from a jar pre-minced to save a bit of time for ourselves. Olive oil, some red pepper flakes, salt, and pepper. We're just going to squish everything together in the bag to combine it. We're going to get all the air that we can out because air causes your freezer burn when you're freezer cooking. And then we're going to seal it and get it into our freezer. On the day you go to make this, you take this super easy recipe that was so fast to put together, dump it, the bag contents into your slow cooker and cook that for three to five hours until your chicken falls apart basically. <laughs> and you can serve this one on rice or potatoes with a side vegetable or whatever, but the main part of your meal is done and if you were in a real hurry and you weren't able to get your side vegetable done it does have the peppers and onions in it so bonus one of our more popular recipes is our ground beef stroganoff but in that one we do use cream of mushroom soup we do so today we're sharing with you our beef stroganoff made with beef strips because no canned soup this recipe will make right in the bag. We'll start with our beef strips. We're going to add in a chopped onion, some sliced mushrooms, a bit of beef broth, a half block of cream cheese, a teaspoon of basil, and a bit of parsley. We're going to mix that all around into the bag. It's going to be a little trickier with that cream cheese, so make sure that it's softened. And don't worry, it will soften nicely in the slow cooker. We're going to get all that air out of the bag because air is the enemy when it comes to freezer meals. We're going to freeze it up and on the day of cooking, we're going to thaw it. We're going to get it into the crock pot on low for three to five hours. And then this is something you definitely want to serve over egg noodles or some fettuccine. I know that in our ground beef recipe, we add in a little scoop of sour cream at the end to stir it in and it gives it a little bit of extra zip and tang. It doesn't call for that in this one, but it's something that I would be tempted to do to make it a little bit creamier. You totally could. We have a vegetable chili recipe that goes in the slow cooker and it's nice and healthy. The reason that I chose to share it in this video today is because we're in the middle of a deep freeze. We are in a deep freeze. If you weren't aware, we live in Alberta, Canada, and today it is, I took a picture of it on my phone and maybe we can share it in the video. Uh, it's minus 40 Celsius, which is minus 40 Fahrenheit as well. And I live two doors down from Sharla. We're besties. We've been making freezer meals forever. 
And so I had a choice this morning. I'd already driven my kids to school because buses don't run at this temperature. And well, they run, the bus companies just say, no, we're not going to do that to our buses. <laughs> So a lot of the kids stay home, but my kids are older, they're in that junior high, senior high phase where it's like, mm, we're coming up to exams, it's important to go. So I did drive them, but then I went home and I parked it in my garage and I put on my cold winter duds and I walked over to Charlotte's because I, my car would sit here for like three or four hours while we're working here today and it is hard to start a cold car and so I just left it in my garage and I put on my toque and my mitts, my toque. We call the hat, the knitted cap a toque here in Canada and my big mitts and my big boots. And I just walked over. It was two minutes and, and it was cold. <laughs> when I saw her walk in my front door with her, you know, toque and, and, and jacket. And actually she didn't seem to be shivering, which was surprising. I wasn't shivering at all. I was I was walking hard because I didn't want to be out there any longer. I should have put a second layer on my bottom half. Like I didn't put snow pants on or um, my daughter has to walk to work today after school and she didn't want to take snow pants because teenagers, you know? And I'm like, okay, then at least wear leggings underneath because you need that second layer. And she doesn't have a very far walk to go to work after school, but it's like, Five she also has- is Five, five minutes. minutes, but she also will learn if that's if the leggings aren't enough. I can guarantee you, she will take her snow pants next time. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Or five years from now, she will. Someday, <laughs> someday they grow out of that. But I also saw a guy at the mall yesterday, and it's minus thirty yesterday, and he was wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Oh Th my! They're out there. <laughs> I've been trying to just stay inside. And thankfully, we've got a freezer stacked with meals, so I don't really have the need for groceries. Kind of got everything that <laughs> I need, but I actually, I have an appointment tomorrow morning and I'm considering making it a virtual appointment. <laughs> it's a therapy appointment and normally I go in person, but I'm gonna email her today and maybe she'd prefer for it to be a virtual appointment. Maybe too. she would appreciate that because too. tomorrow is supposed to be considerably colder than today, which sounds... I don't know how it can get much colder. Crazy, but that's the truth. It's supposed to be it, minus 44 and feels like minus 56. Ah! I don't even know how these numbers are possible, but here we are and now you might be able to understand why we're bringing you slow cooker, like hearty recipes. That's right. Well, the other reason I left my car at home is my husband works tonight. He was on nights, but yesterday his car, he, it's a 12 hour shift. His car sat there for 14 hours and he couldn't start it at the end of the day. And I don't know if it was plugged in or not. So I need him to also have a vehicle if he needs to. But yeah, um, yeah so we are figuring out vehicle situation at our house because it's just that cold that the cars just say no. no and our daughter no. didn't go to school yesterday because, and she's in high school, but her, well, it's our van that she drives. And it, to be fair, it's a 19 year old van. <laughs> so, it's, it's held up really well and it's done its time in these Alberta winters. Yeah. It's, it's put in the work, but this year it decided no more. You it went plug it, me in. It went today though. Oh yeah, you had to plug it in yes. and it was okay. Yeah. So if you aren't familiar with plugging in your vehicle, um, <laughs> in Canada and probably colder parts of the United States, like I think in Minnesota, you understand the block heater. Um, there is a plug that goes into a little heater that warms your engine block overnight so that the oil and doesn't scream at you. <laughs> They're still pretty awful sounding when they start, but they will start and they will keep your block warm. So it's now a thing. that we've had an education in how actually cold it can get here and what you do when it's that cold, um, we're gonna share with you this vegetarian chili that will help you feel warm, even if it's not warm outside. That's right. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to add some crushed tomatoes, diced tomatoes, kidney beans. Now you don't need to drain these because this is a chili and you know, more liquid is always good. Some frozen or canned corn. Then you can also add some diced celery, but I'm allergic to celery, so we skip that part diced red pepper, 
diced yellow pepper, minced garlic, again, just from a jar, diced onion, some peeled and sliced carrots, cumin, chili powder, salt, and if you want, you can add some red pepper flakes as well. You're gonna squish that all together in your bag and then take out as much air as you can, seal it, and put it in your freezer. When you go to make this, you thaw it, and you can simmer it on the stove top for at least an hour, or you can cook it in the slow cooker. As with all chilies, it's going to taste better the longer the flavors meld, and the leftovers are gonna be even better than the day of. That's right. That's just a universal chili thing. It, it is, and I think same with soups. Have you ever gone to restaurants where they say yesterday's soup mm -hmm. instead of soup du jour? Yeah. And with chili, you can serve it with a bun or pop over a biscuit. And, and it's funny because with soups, Christy always says you got to serve it with some kind of... Some kind, some kind of carb, even if it's just crackers. I like to have something with my soup. And I like my soups on their own, but chili, I'm down with a bun or a pop over or a biscuit. Totally. Or a side salad. Like a Caesar salad goes really nice with a chili. Mm -hmm. It totally does. So you can totally dress this up or dress it down, make it homey however you want. But if you're making this and it's minus 40 and you don't have any buns in the house, you can have it on its own. <laughs> you don't have That's to go allowed. to the store. <laughs> or, or you can go find those like freezer burnt hot dog buns that are at the bottom of your freezer and you ch 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 good enough. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. I've totally done that. This Tex-Mex chicken is a pretty new recipe to us, but it is a total flavor powerhouse, and it is very slow cooker friendly, and it is definitely minus 40 friendly. It's hearty. It is really hearty. It is good. It is like good, good, good. So in your bag, you're going to have your boneless, skinless chicken breasts, or you could do this with boneless, skinless chicken thighs. We're going to add in some diced onion, some taco seasoning, some minced garlic, some cream cheese, again, softened, cubed if you'd like, some kernel corn, um, either frozen or out of a can that's been drained, some black beans that are drained and rinsed, some chunky salsa, and some diced green chilies. We're going to mix that all around in the bag. We're going to save ourselves the trouble of dirtying up a bowl for this one, and then get all that excess air out, seal it, and freeze it. When we go to cook this, this is definitely something that is made for the slow cooker. Cook it on low for four to five hours or on high for three hours. This is a really great one to shred and serve in wraps or over rice. I find that there is a lot of liquid that comes with this one so that it is really nice to put that sauce on the rice as well. Mm -hmm. It does not get much easier than this next recipe because it's five ingredients or less or six ingredients or less depending on if you count salt and pepper as one ingredient, like salt and pepper, <gasps> or <laughs> Rachel Ray, you know, you know, I love Rachel Ray. She says that if, when she counts ingredients, she doesn't count salt, pepper, or minced garlic as ingredients because they should just be in everything. <laughs> They're just a given. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going by her logic, then this is a four ingredient recipe. <laughs> That's right. We'll take it, Rachel. Thanks. This is our easy Italian meatballs, and it's right in the name. It is so easy. Into your large freezer bag, you're going to put some frozen pre-cooked meatballs that you bought from the store. If you want to get extra bonus points only in your own mind, <laughs> you can make your own meatballs and cook them up and add them in here. Then you're going to add some pasta sauce or red sauce, some rosemary, lemon juice, salt, and pepper. Squish that all together to combine it, take out your air, get the bag sealed, get it into your freezer. On the day you go to make this, you can heat it in a skillet, you can cook it in the slow cooker. Either way, you're gonna serve this one on pasta, generally spaghetti, or you can have meatball subs with it. Yeah, you totally can. And that's really nice on a cold wintry day, absolutely. Either of those, like spaghetti and meatballs or a meatball sub would just really hit the spot. <laughs> that is totally true. Now, you are gonna find all of these recipes below in our description, and you can find them at freezermeals101.com 
or you can find them in our club and that would make them even easier. Yes, because our club generates your shopping list and prep list for you as well as creates your printable labels that have the cooking instructions on them like the ones that you've seen today. That's right, and you should take a gander through there and decide if the club is right for you because I can guarantee you it is. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this blustery day. I hope that wherever you are is warmer than we are today. I can guarantee you wherever you are probably is warmer than where we are today. Especially because by the time we get this video edited, it will no longer be in the middle of this polar vortex that we're living no, in. No, that's right. And we won't be as cold either, thankfully. You know how in the States, they'll blame Canada for the, the polar vortexes. This one came from Siberia, straight over Russia. I'm telling you, it isn't our fault. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Happy cooking.